Okay, so uh, this is the second video. I'm just continuing on um, from where I left off. Uh, here are the three generations, the P, F1, and F2. So um, we often think of the P as parents, but if you were the P generation, then the F gener F1 generation would be your kids, uh, future kids. But um, your parents could also be the P generation, or your grandparents could be the P generation. And if your grandparents were the P generation, then you'd be the F2 generation. Does that make sense? It's all relative. We can move these terms around. It just shows us the relationship between parents and offspring. And we could keep going to F3 and F4 and F5 and on and on and on, but it's not as useful um, at those higher F values. So um, a few more um, terms to uh, to cover and if you really get confused with Punnett squares here is a link to um, a fourth grader explaining Punnett squares to you so maybe that will help um, but anyways here's a Punnett square um, basically that is just a diagram that oops sorry I gotta get my pointer back here excuse me So it's a diagram used to determine gene combinations, or well, really allele combinations. Um, and it's used to predict and compare genetic variations. So <clears throat> you, I think you've learned, you've seen these before. This is a Punnett square, um, and um, let's say that this parent, this red mythical bird, um, has the genotype big A big A, two dominant alleles. It's homozygous dominant, and the blue bird of the same species, for the same gene, is homozygous recessive or little a little a. The Punnett square is going to allow us to be able to predict and compare the genetic combinations of offspring between these two parents for this single gene in this Punnett square. So what you should know is that probability is the likelihood that a particular event will occur. So the example that you know is like flipping a coin and getting heads or tails. You know that every time you flip it it's half um, or 50 percent chance of getting heads and when you flip it a second time it's not guaranteed that it's going to be tails. Every time you flip it it's 50-50. So when we look at one of these planet squares like this, this square, this tells us the probability every time these two parents conceive of a new child or new baby, new chick in this case because it's birds, um, it has the same probability just like every time you flip a head, flip a coin, you get the same probability of having heads or tails. Um, so that being said, let's do a practice problem. So we're going to cross a heterozygous male with a heterozygous female. Now important thing to remember is that the letters can be um, can be confusing sometimes you gotta be careful what letters to use but because we're talking about um, alleles or versions of the same gene we're gonna use the same letter and we want to be careful we can't we should not let me write this and I want you to write this too should not use just any letter should use the letter for the phenotype, um, but only letters, use only letters that look different um, capitalized from um, when they're lowercase. Okay? So that way it's easy to know what 
what allele, dominant and recessive, you're talking about, and you don't get confused and get the wrong ratios or probability. So I'm just going to use the letter B. So across a heterozygous male, so heterozygous means different allele, so it's going to have one dominant and one recessive. Sorry, I'm going to write that in here. So one dominant and one recessive with the heterozygous female also is the same letters. So these letters separate, and it doesn't really matter um, if the male is on the side or on the top, um, as long as the, the letters or the alleles for each individual parent stay together. We usually do capital letters first. So and then, so these are, so I'm going to add a notation here. This side, are the these represent the gametes from one parent, and because this is the dad, because this is the male, that's where the errors are coming from, this is the, these are the alleles carried carried in the sperm. And these on this side are the alleles that were carried by the eggs the mom made. So then for the different combinations for the next generation, we just combine these options. So in this box we'd have big B, big B. Here we'd big B, little B. Big B, little B, little B, little B. And so what we know from this is that um, there are some, there is a 25% chance that the offspring between these two parents, for each offspring, it will be homozygous dominant. There's a 50% chance that it will be heterozygous and a 25% chance that it will be homozygous recessive. We didn't talk about what homozygous, recessive, and dominant really look like. We haven't talked about phenotypes yet. So let's move to the next slide. So here are phenotypes. So suppose big R means round seeds and little r means wrinkled seeds. Notice that we didn't use W's here. We're using R's because it's the same gene, just different versions. So it's the same letter, different versions, capital or lowercase. So the genotype for homozygous round, homozygous round, would be big R, big R, and the phenotype is round. The genotype for heterozygous round, hetero means different, so big R, little r, and it's round because the big R is dominant. So it shows when it's there. And little r is recessive, so it's hidden in the presence of the dominant allele. The genotype for homozygous wrinkled homozygous is same and it's wrinkled so it's recessive so it's going to be little r little r and the phenotype is wrinkled okay I hope that makes sense so here is another practice problem for you and I want you to pause this and try this and then check your answers okay so go ahead and hit pause Okay, so hopefully you paused and tried the, the um, problem. I'm going to go and walk through it. So cross a homozygous dominant, homozygous dominant tall pea plant. Because I know that being tall is dominant, I'm going to use the letter T's. So I know that one parent is big T, big T, homozygous tall, with a heterozygous tall pea plant. So that's going to be big T, little t. Okay, oops. Let's draw, try to draw a straight line, Mr. Patel. Okay. So ignore this weird one that goes off to the right. So I know that one parent is big T, big T. The other parent's big T, little t. And so I'm going to combine them. And I know that 100%, what that means is that 100% of their offspring will look Tall. They all have a tall phenotype, but 50% of them are homozygous dominant and the other 50% are heterozygous. Okay? Oops. Sorry about that.
Sorry. Okay, I'm back. Um, so the fifty percent of them are heterozygous. Um, go back to my blue. Okay. Or heterozygous. Okay. Okay. So here's practice problem number three. Um, so brunette is dominant to blonde for hair color. Cross a heterozygous brunette father. And pause this if you want. This would be a good check to see how well you can decode this and then hit play to watch my answer. Okay. So cross a heterozygous brunette father with a heterozygous brunette mother. Brunette is dominant. So a big B, little b cross with big B little b. So, I'll draw a Punnett square and give the genotypes and the phenotypes. So, I'm going to do this shorthand, but you should be able to do this and write this a little bit more explicitly. So, I know that this is going to be big B, little b, big B, little b. So, I'll have big B, big B in here, big B, little b here, big B, little b here, and little b, little b there. So, it's the same kind of problem as before. I've got 75% of the chance for each baby to be a brunette and 25% chance that each baby will be blonde. Um, but 50% of the baby, there's a 50% chance that each baby will be um, heterozygous and 50% chance they'll be homozygous, but half of that 50%, 25% will be homozygous dominant and 25% chance of being homozygous recessive. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, so I've left some other practice problems with the substitute for you to try. Um, let me just make a note in case the substitute forgets to tell you that you need to be able to pra you need to practice these and make sure that you're doing these correctly because you have a quiz on this on these skills next class. So you need to know the vocab, so use the vocab to practice and make sure you can solve these problems and answer these questions because you have a quiz on this on um, Wednesday. So be ready for that. It'll be the first grade, sorry, second grade of um, of this quarter um, after the readings that you received last class. Okay?